Today, I will show you how to create this beautiful photo collage, all that in Photoshop. I'll be right back. Hi, this is Rick from GFX Creative, helping you create better designs, better images, and better photos. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and to activate the notification bell so that you don't miss any of our future videos. In today's video, I want to show you how to create this beautiful photo collage, all that in Adobe Photoshop. If you're ready, I'm ready. Let's get to it now. Okay guys, we will get started right away and today I will show you how to create this beautiful photo collage step-by-step uh, step from start to finish from scratch uh, and as you can see this is a professional work and you can be proud of it. For example, if you've got some, I don't know, some personal photos, family photos you want to prevent, you, you want to present, sorry, you might use those techniques to do that and I will explain to you things in a quite detailed way and uh, uh, this tutorial is uh, is 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 a packed full uh, is packed full with lots of techniques lots of secrets that you're gonna like okay we will start by creating a new document okay uh, let's uh, I will choose uh, 4000 by 2000 pixels okay and uh, of course if you want to create something for print if you want to create something to print, you could use centimeters or inches or whatever uh, appropriate. If it's full screen, like right now, I can leave this at 72 uh, pixel per, uh, pixels per inch. Okay, no problem. Of course, RGB. If you want to print it, <laughs> make sure that you choose CMYK color if it is for print. And when it comes to those details, this is simply the background and uh, you don't have to worry about that leave them as default okay but for my title i will create this i will call this collage okay and just create this okay this is done the first part is done and uh, i will start by uh, creating a, a background first of all i will start by creating a background just like this of course selecting this selecting the uh, rectangle tool okay then dragging and before uh, doing anything, what I will do, I will change this to a uh, gradient. I can either uh, click here on the field here, or I can come here and click. I will have it. By the way, if you don't see this properties uh, panel here, you could go into your windows and make sure it's activated. You will be having it. Okay, let me click on this. Okay, and I will select this gradient. And then I will start modifying this. I want to I want the black to start from the top so I will do this and then uh, I will uh, just move this to about to about here and then I will create another one here just by clicking here you can create uh, you can create different different points by doing that and I just want to make that a little bit just a little bit uh, darker about here a little bit darker and just move it here okay by the way this slider not only controls the color but it also it also controls the the you can control the the transition between the colors with it okay by just moving it i believe we're about we're about okay okay if we need to change anything later on we will be doing that okay i believe it's okay okay and this is done for us and this was the first part of our work done here. Okay, let's move on to the second, the second part of this uh, of our work. I will put this off for the moment. And what I will do, uh, we will start creating this border here, this uh, kind of frame here. Okay, let's start doing that. Uh, and to do that, of course, we'll be using the shape tool again. Okay, and uh, let's make sure it's that it's uh we'll try something like this and i will start creating 
I will create a rectangle like this. Okay, don't worry about the color, we'll be working on that later. I could do this. Okay. And before going anywhere with this, what I will do, of course it's created, what I will do with before doing anything to it, I will convert it to a smart object. You will see why in a minute, okay? Right click and convert that to a smart object, okay? Then I will select this. I'm starting to create this frame here, okay? Command D. And what I will do, I will hold Control, okay? Control. Uh, by pressing Command T, I'm activating, I'm basically activating my uh, the transform tool, okay? Uh, I will press and hold Control, okay? What I'm trying to do now is to create this this kind of frame. I'm holding Shift so that I don't uh, Control and Shift. I'm holding that so that I don't. Uh, if I don't hold Shift, I may you see that may get distorted but by holding Shift. That will make sure that it stays it stays straight uh, like this. This is the first part of the job done, and I told you that. Uh, uh, I converted that into a smart object. Smart objects are simply you know, like uh, kind of kinds of folders. And uh, look at that, I've distorted this after converting that to smart object. When I double click on this, look at that. My square is, uh, my rectangle stays exactly the same. It's simply that it's distorting <laughs> the folder or the cover of this uh, of this uh, design here you will see how how useful that would be when we will be adding when we will be, we we will add uh, the pictures later on okay and uh, i believe we are almost there okay okay i will call this call this frame okay let's call this frame let's call this frame okay i remember the miss misspell that okay like maybe okay then the next thing I'm gonna do, I will create a copy of this uh, frame layer, okay? I will right click and uh, uh, new layer via copy and I will call this image, okay? I will call this image and uh, I will cause command uh, or control T or I could go edit transform, okay? That's the same thing. And uh, what I will do, I will just resize this, but let me, let me press escape. I will change the color so that you can see what's going on here. Okay, uh, I told you since this is a the, 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 this is a smart object, we have this here. Uh, when I double click on this, I can open this rectangle and so on. I can actually I can actually modify <laughs> modify the content of this thing here. Okay, after doing that, I will save. I will close it and now as you can see look at that the color changed so what I want to do is with, with this is simply to, to reduce its size so that if, in fact this is uh, where I will be placing my image so I will press and just just decrease that I will hold shift also uh, so that I can constrain it I will, I will just reduce the size a little bit like this I will press uh, this, okay. Let's uh, further distort this. Let's further distort this, okay. Uh, so that it can match uh, the perspective a little bit more. So I will just hold shift and I will just push this down a little bit. Uh, about here. I will also hold shift and just do this so that I can and uh, also I will press command just to click on that point and just move that up and come here also at the top and move that holding shift of course so that you you don't lose your work okay and then press enter over to my keyboard to get this so inside of this I will be placing my image uh, what I will also do is to uh, I, I will uh, create 
I will create a new copy so that I can put the shadow on the border. If you look at the image here, uh, let me zoom in. You will see on the border here, we have shadows. Okay, here, right here, uh, we have uh, shadows on the border here uh, to create some more realism. So what I will do, I will create that uh, layer that I will be using for this. Let me right click and uh, new layer via copy and I will call this, I'll call this frame shadow, frame shadow, frame shadow. Okay, and uh, uh, when it comes to uh, the color, it's not important right now because you will see how that works later on. Okay, now we will create this uh, little border here uh, on the side here so that uh, we create a kind of 3D frame of course. Okay, we got the frame, we got this, we got this. Okay, uh, let me double click this and call this main frame. Engine mainframe, okay. Oh, let's create the border. So, to do that, what I will do, I will come here again to uh, on my rectangle tool and uh, I will try to select maybe a lighter color. If we need to adjust to that, we will be adjusting, okay. And then I will come here, click and drag to create to create uh, of this, okay. Okay. I know that does not look like pretty, pretty, pretty thing right now. So that's why we will be working on it now. Command T, so that we can uh, work on it. And I will zoom in quite a bit so that I can match. I can easily work on this. I will hold Shift, okay, and then I will drag it up uh, like this. Uh, let me also. I will hold command now on my keyboard, command or control, and then I will, uh, sorry, I will hold command and I will click on this point, holding shift of course, I will just drag it down a little bit, okay, I will go down now, I'm pressing uh, my spacebar key on my keyboard just to move around, okay, spacebar, you will say that, and then here also I will Command, click on this point. Command or control, I click on this point and I will, sorry, it did not get it right now. Click on this and then just push it, holding shift of course, to make sure it does not distort. We have um, this, I think it's okay. Okay, and I think we get, I think we get, uh, oh yes, we have it. We have it and I think I should modify the color uh, the color just a little bit to modify the color uh, just double click on this okay on this uh, little little square here and just let's make it a little bit darker around here okay I think it's okay right now perfect I think we're fine Let's rework on this. <laughs> we had a gradient on this. I think I lost the gradient. No problem. We're gonna we're gonna fix that. I will click on this. That is my rectangle tool. And as you can see, it will reactivate my properties here. So I will click on this, and I will go back to the gradient so that I can uh, rework that out. Okay. Let's do that again. No, we know how to do that. I will click on this here, and I will make this a little bit darker. Maybe about here. Okay, this button will be used to uh, just to, 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 to swap it, okay, like this. That's exactly what I want to do. I will push this here, and uh, I think we're in this here slightly. Slightly here, and move the white here. Okay, we need to modify that later on. We will modify it. Okay, this is the first part of uh, our work done. And uh, let's create a folder for this. Let's put everything inside of a folder. Okay, let's right click. Right click, put everything in a folder. Okay, group from layers. And we call this image number one. Okay, 
image one this is our first frame uh, okay this is our first frame sorry let me just move that outside okay because this rectangle this background is not full part like this okay this is the first frame you might be asking yourself what about the image that's where the cool part gets in let me just put that off for a second and let's add the shadow let's add the border shadow I will show you something really really cool okay uh, frame shadow here what I will do I will come here down here to the effects button and I will choose what is called an inner shadow okay <laughs> right now I know it's white but we will go for something like this something some color that is a little bit darker about here okay I don't want this to be screen I want it to be a little bit like this but I will increase the opacity increase the size just a little bit and look at that I can have this kind of frame this kind of uh, frame like uh, just like as if there, 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 there was light and kind of shadow okay just press ok and uh, we are done with the shadow now let's go to the image okay for the image what we will do to place the image inside of this we will do something really cool okay but before doing that let, let us let's do something first uh, on the shadow frame here on the shadow frame here uh, come on this, this this here because what I want I want the shadow on the border but I don't want the fill of this uh, of this uh, uh, of this layer so what I will do let me show you I will double click on this let's turn this to a red okay I will save it let's close this okay what I want I don't want the red I want the border so to do that I will come here select the layer and then select the fill uh, and bring the fill all the way down to uh, all the way down to zero okay this is gonna be fine and uh, uh, we will keep the shadow okay now let's get to adding the image okay i will double click on this this will open this mod object okay you will see this this is the original image we added of course you remember that so to add the image now i've got this uh, image open what i will do uh, i will uh, first of all convert that image to a smart object simply so that when i distort it i don't lose pixels or it becomes kind of blurred okay then I will edit copy and come here on this here and edit paste that here let me undo that and show you another way to do that I could simply click on the image click 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 and hold of course drag it to here on this tab name here and once I'm inside here I just release that's the same thing and now command T to resize the image i'm holding alt or option to make sure it it resizes uh, in the center and uh, i will just move this to out here let's resize it down a little bit a little bit resize this down if you're using older versions you need to hold shift to make sure your image does not get distorted but in the latest uh, the, the latest versions of photoshop we don't have to hold shift okay we just click and drag and it works okay let's move that to about here i think we're there press return on enter my keyboard make sure you save your work file save or command control s and now one two three boom look at that look at that it's already placed and it's beautifully placed now if you, you i can zoom in and as you can see it is placed already okay i can close this now and uh, the next step the next thing we're going to do is to duplicate this frame and make sure that we have an additional four frames to add other images to add the second image what i will do i will copy this uh, complete frame okay uh, let me show you how to do that uh, I will show you a wrong way to do things then I will show you an, uh, uh, a very important mistake to avoid okay that's gonna be a trick that I will show you okay I will do this and then I will click and drag the group here to create a copy and of course since it's gonna be behind this I will drag it all the way down here okay and I will pull this 
image 2 okay then I will come here I will double click uh, and uh, I will I will change the image okay I've got this image open okay this image open you saw how we did that I will convert that to small object then I will click and drag it here okay okay I will do this and I will resize it so that it fits my frame properly let's move it to about here okay really about here I think it's good okay percent up. I can I will put this off I will not delete it I will put it off just for a minute I will save this okay let's go to our main uh, file and look what happened okay and in fact the other the, the second layer let me do this command T the second layer is placed but the problem is that it replaced the first one also as you can see so what will I will do I will undo everything here okay I will just come here and close this okay I will close this uh, let, 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 let's just uh, okay I will close this one right now don't say this okay what I will do I will uh, go back to this here and I will take this out of this take this out okay reactivate this save this let's close this okay I've got this back and what I will do I will also delete this uh, this new image we did and I will show you the perfect technique to avoid that it changes all your image it is doing that simply because uh, it is keeping the link with that image if you change one of those copies it will update on all the other ones okay so what we will do I will come here and click and drag this do the same process but you will do something different that we will do to avoid to avoid this problem okay I will open this open this and the key is that image okay the image here so what I will do I will right click new small object via copy I will click and drag this here I will remove this one I will delete this one okay close that close that I will also save my work keep on saving your work so that you don't even lose things here then I will come here I will now replace my image of course right click convert it all and bring that in and resize to this uh, sorry resize to make sure it fits uh, things here I will zoom in in like this okay just about here press enter and uh, I could put this off of course I will save this and when I go back here nothing has changed and now command T if I bring the other one here and look at that now it's okay I don't lose uh, I, I don't lose my uh, it does not modify everything inside of, uh, of this image uh, and now I'm ready to go I'm ready to continue and uh, what I will do, I will fast forward this. Now you know the process to produce uh, the other three that we have left on this uh, thing here. Okay, I'll see you in a minute.
Okay, the next thing we're gonna add is uh, we will add some shadows to those frames here. Let me close this, okay? As you can see here, we have shadow here and I will be adding that to those groups. To do that, I will right click here. I've come here, sorry. Go down to uh, the effects button and click drop shadow. Okay, and then uh, I will I will just try to nine and seven okay, six and just bring that to about ninety. Ninety maybe about here. You could also just click and drag this to 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 uh, to move the shadow. You can do this also. Okay, but I think about here. Maybe about here we're fine. Uh, we could work on the spread a little bit. Spread a little bit. Yeah, and then reduce this. Reduce the opacity just a little bit. We could change that later on. Okay. Uh, I think it's a little bit strong. Strong. Okay, leave it about here and what I will do now is to right click and uh, copy layer style okay copy layer style and I will just paste that right click paste layer style so that it applies to the others also Three. to the next step here okay fine let's now add the background okay I've got this image open right now and what I will do convert this to a spot object very nice and then I will drag it all oh, copy and you could copy it there and I will make sure it's there okay and then we will resize it to make sure it it fits our design okay Let's do that to make sure it fits the design properly. Okay, I'm zooming in about here. Okay, then I will bring that down a little bit. Click and drag this to move it down a little bit slightly. Okay, then what I will do, I will right, I will, sorry, I will select this, select the layer, go uh, to uh, here, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And I will go about 12, leave it to about 12 and press OK. Then I will add uh, a layer mask to this layer so that I can uh, blur it, sorry, sorry, so that I can uh, uh, just remove it partly from the bottom. To do that, what I will do, I will select the layer and click on the layer mask button to add this here. OK, then I will, before doing that, I will activate this background layer here, this uh, gradient we added. And by the way, let's call this BG. BG, okay. And uh, I will go back to this layer mask, making sure that my, uh, on the left here, my foreground color is black. If it's not like this, you could press D. If it's uh, different colors here, you could press, press D. Okay, it will switch back to default. And then you could just uh, use your arrow keys or press X. On your keyboard to switch between them. I will then select my uh, brush tool. Okay, make sure I'm using a soft brush. Okay, I'm using a soft brush uh, here. Okay, and uh, on the zero and the size will control that later on. Okay, make sure you will paint with black, opacity 100%, flow 100%, no problem. And then what I will do, I will just paint on this like this. Okay, let's just paint on it like this. Just to erase the bottom part of this. Really, really nice. As you can see, it's really beautiful. It's beautiful. I save my work. Okay, and now we can move. We can move on to the next step here. The next step now is to start doing some color grading on this image to start bringing it to where we want to, okay? I'll come up here and uh, I will first of all 
click the compare to the adjustment uh, button and I will add a color lookup to this okay color lookups for these these are just like presets so that you add to images uh, with specific colors and, and, and you know specific properties and what, what I'm gonna do we come here to this one here the Fuji uh, 3510 and so on and I will add this to my image and look at that just with that uh, uh, look at the drastic change that this brought to the image before after and look at that it doesn't lock to the image just with this just right away I will let's let's group this right click group layer and I will call this color grading and anyway we will be doing color grading in that anyway okay and uh, this is the first one as I look at this image I notice that this one here uh, the fourth image is kind of too bright what I will do I will go all the way here here is the image I will add a curves adjustment layer to it to try to uh, to bring down and make sure it, it clips to the, to, to the image right now okay right here and I will just I will just reduce the the brightness of this image slightly and maybe just do this a little bit more just like this. anyway it's gonna be it's a little bit bright but just to try to balance it with the the brightness of the other images okay the next thing we'll do I will add a, a color keep on color grading this I will add a color balance I just want to layer to this and just uh, notice that we're adding this to the whole image right now okay and then I will just try to play with this because I love the kind of blue my blue thing here in the image. I don't kind of like that. Maybe about this? Yeah. Maybe about here. I think it's okay. Okay. Look at that. We we we, we were here. Let me just do that. Here, just kind of uh, washed out and uh, kind of a little bit. That's where you add value to your design. You add value to uh, your image. Okay. Another thing I will do, I will create some kind of vignette around this image to draw the attention a little bit more towards my uh, towards my frames, towards the, the photos. To do that, then I've got different options, different ways to do that. Okay, and uh, but I will show you an easy one to to do it in more uh, in a more uh, how do you call that in an undestructive way. Okay, I will create a new layer. Okay, come down, create a new layer here. Okay, uh, I will select my brush tool. What I'm doing, I'm, uh, I will try to sample the color I will use as a vignette. To do that, I will select my brush tool and come here and uh, look for a quite dark color. This one is good, okay? When you sample it here, you will see that it will appear in your uh, foreground here, your foreground color. Then what I will do, I will go to edit, fill, and what I will do, I will fill this layer with this foreground color. So to do that, I will come here into the content and select foreground color, press OK, and as you can see, it filled it with that. Don't worry, we will fix that in a minute. And uh, what I will also do, I will go to the blending uh, list here and go to and select soft light okay we will then control the uh, control the opacity i go into opacity and just bring it down slightly to about here i think it's okay here and then i will add a, a layer mask to it so that i can remove it from the center uh, a little bit okay click on here make sure that uh, my brush uh, my foreground color is black if it's not black as i said you just need to press d or just uh, you know bring it back to how it was and then what i will do i will just brush on the middle so that i can reveal more of the image more of those frames here just like this and as you can see we have 
something beautiful, something very, very nice in here. And uh, if we take a look at the color grading we did, we took the image from just this normal image to this one, which is uh, <laughs> kind of a valuable design, uh, which I'm sure you, you, you would be proud of. Okay, in the next step, we'll start adding the text to finalize this beautiful design. Okay, let's now add the text to this design. But before doing that, I noticed that I, I want to have a little bit more vignetting around this. So what I will do, I will select the layer we had vignetting. So we could, we could rename it to, to vignette. Okay, and then I will increase the opacity a little bit more to just to increase the effect a little bit. Well, here it's fine, okay? Okay, onto the text. Let's close this. Uh, select the text tool, and I will use a font called Ananda Black. I will give you the link to uh, download this font, okay? Ananda Black, and uh, I will uh, 60, 163 points, and I will just type my text here, and I will call this, uh, let's see. Uh, beautiful, beautiful photo, photo collage. Beautiful photo collage. Okay, I can increase the, uh, I can increase the increase the size of the text. I could go to the properties here. Or what you can do if you don't have the properties panel up here, you could uh, go back to uh, to. Uh, back to the text tool, the tag tool, highlight your text and then you could adjust, you could adjust uh, uh, the size of the text accordingly. Or for example, I'm, I'm, I'm 163, I may want it to be 180, for example. That's why I love uh, the, the properties panel here because it gives me uh, a kind of more, more of that, uh, uh, more of that flexibility, okay? I will come here and just increase that to about here. Make this bigger, a little bigger. Of course, the size of your text will be based uh, upon uh, the size of your image, the size of your frame. Okay, let's try to make this to bring this to about here. Okay, of course, it likes shadows. What I will do now? Go to go to uh, select the of course. Make sure uh, it's selected. Go to effects drop shadow and then I will drop shadow and make sure it's a little bit bigger uh, well this okay and then what I did uh, what I want to do also is to add an outer glow and make sure that I, I sample uh, a dark color from the image okay just like the dark color we just uh, sample uh, out here Maybe about here, about here. Okay, this one. Press OK. Okay, and uh, it gives the opacity to just to make sure that the text is a little bit more readable. More readable like this. Okay, and uh, now, as you can see, our design is complete, and we've got a really, really, really beautiful design with everything we needed uh, to do that. I will now show you how to uh, how to customize that. By customizing, I mean, uh, what if I've got my images and I want to replace my images into this frame? You will agree with me that this tutorial, <laughs> this tutorial would, be, would be useless if I did not show you, if I don't show you how to customize uh, how to customize uh, this and place your own images or change the background. That's exactly what we will do now, okay? Uh, let's say you want to change uh, the images to replace the images. You've already seen that, but let, 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 let's talk about it seriously and show you. Let's say I want to change uh, this model with my own images, okay? Uh, what I will do, I will, uh, of course, that's why we got, we got organized uh, in a very professional way since the beginning. It's the image file. What I will do, I will open the image file. Okay, you, you saw that already. 
I will double click on the image, okay, open it, and then, for example, I've got uh, this open, okay, I've got this image open. I would just convert it to small object, of course, as you saw in the beginning, then drag this here, okay. I think you had already understood that, but it's, it's, it's a, good, a good thing to remind you how you can do that. Okay, let's, let's enlarge this uh, just a little bit. Okay, press enter. Save this. Of course, you could uh, uh, just give it a minute to save. You could delete those things and save it again. Okay, I will come here and close this. Don't save it. And if you look at your image now, here it is, you've replaced it. If you want to do that for something else, for another image, let's say this one, the fourth one, let's do that. You look for the image, of course, you double click. Uh, let's close this one, okay. Look for the image, convert it to small object, and just try to drag it into this small object folder. Resize it quickly, okay. Resize it quickly. Just zoom in to see where we're going with this. And then just like this. Press enter return. I will save it. Okay, and here also I can delete. Save. Okay, close this. Uh, just close this image also. Don't save. And bingo. The image is here okay now let's see how to change the background if you want to change the background now let me just close this here okay let's say i want to change i want to uh, i want to change the background easy okay we've got this image open i will right click convert it to small object click and drag uh, here okay then I want D to just size it down a little bit like this and bring it to about maybe about here. Press return, auto return. Then I can put this off. Come here on the image. Uh, remember, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Same work here. About 12. Okay. Okay, just uh, press okay. Then we add a uh, we add a layer mask to it. Select the brush tool. Make sure I'm on black here. Okay, and then just paint away the bottom part, just like this, and you're done. I can now save my work, uh, just like this, and my work is done. Isn't that beautiful? isn't that great okay i hope you learned something from this tutorial today uh, it was a very exciting one i, I had a lot of joy uh, showing that to you okay that was it for this tutorial i hope you learned something if you did hit that like button and share the video you can also hit that subscribe button if you have not yet done so until next time it is bye bye from me see you